Hey mamas and mamas to be, my name is Crystal, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking all about unmedicated natural birth. If you're considering or planning a natural unmedicated birth, then this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to be sharing nine things that I've been doing to prepare for a natural birth. I'm currently 22 weeks pregnant with my rainbow baby girl, and thank goodness I am past that morning sickness stage because that was absolutely miserable. If you're still in the first trimester and you're suffering from nausea and vomiting and all of that stuff like food aversions and just low energy and headaches, insomnia, like I totally feel for you, but just know that it will be over soon. Mine actually stopped around the 15 week mark, so hopefully that's the case for you too or even sooner. I'm going to put links below for everything that I share with you today so that you can just have access to all of it. The first thing I did was I looked for a midwife and a birth center in my area. Luckily, I was able to find one that was super close. I know that's not the case for everyone, so I'm going to be putting a link below where you can search a midwife or a birth center in your area, and that's just a great place to get started. The second thing that I've been doing is watching positive birth videos, specifically positive, natural, unmedicated home birth videos for me since I'm doing a home birth. But you can watch live birth videos if you're interested in that, or if that's a little bit too much for you, you can always watch birth stories. This is just a good thing to do to prepare yourself for kind of what to expect and different scenarios and just watching plenty of women power through natural birth and without the need for any interventions. The third thing that I've been doing is following birth doulas and birth educators. One of the main birth educators I've been following is Bridget Taylor. She has a ton of awesome videos. She has a ton of informative videos on births, like all stages of pregnancy, all the stages of labor, and even postpartum. Sarah Levon, she's not so much natural birth based, but she does have a lot of informative videos, so definitely check her out too. The fourth thing that I've been doing is practicing hypnobirthing techniques. These are affirmations, visualizations, relaxation, and meditation. In hypnobirthing, they explain the fear, tension, pain cycle, and how to replace that with the confidence, relaxation, and peaceful power cycle. The fear, attention, pain cycle is usually what causes a woman to want to get medication like Pitocin and an epidural. And if you understand the fear, attention, pain cycle and how to counteract that with a positive cycle, then you're just going to set yourself up for success in natural labor. In hypnobirthing, you also learn a lot about what the body is doing, why the body is doing it, and the confidence that you can have in everything that your body is doing during labor. I haven't actually taken any hypnobirthing classes or read any books, but I've read articles and I've watched plenty of YouTube videos on hypnobirthing, and it's something I'm definitely going to be using during my labor. The fifth thing that I've been doing is reading natural birth books and articles. So the first book I bought when I found out I was pregnant was the Mama Natural book by Genevieve Howland. It's a great book. It aligns completely with everything I want for my pregnancy and for my birth. She also has a website where she has tons of articles and videos on everything pregnancy and birth. This is the Mama Natural book. There's also some other birth books that I haven't personally read, but they've been recommended by the birth educators that I've been watching, so I'll link some of those below as well. The sixth thing that I've been doing is working out. So I didn't really do this in the first trimester just because I felt so horrible. I had no energy and I was nauseous like 24 seven. I actually just started working out recently and I've just been doing at home workouts with body weight and maybe some lightweight workouts. I have a personal training background so I've just been doing my own workouts. I have some videos on my IGTV from when quarantine happened and I was posting those for my clients. So I just do those and I modify the ab exercises or I eliminate them completely if I feel like they're not really safe enough for pregnancy. If you want to check out those videos, I'll put a link to my Instagram below so you can see them. And I've always loved doing yoga and I've definitely been implementing it for pregnancy. Some of my favorite yoga instructors are actually on YouTube. They're Yoga with Cassandra and Yoga with Adrian. They both have prenatal videos on there that you can check out. They're great. It's super important to stay aligned and flexible in your body during pregnancy and for labor. The seventh thing I've been doing is meditation and breathing. So especially with the hypnobirthing, they really focus a lot on breathing and breathing your baby down and staying calm and relaxed through your breathing. 
during labor. I've been practicing meditation for almost a year now. I started practicing it when I found the Meditation for Women podcast by Katie Kremitzos. She also has a sleep meditation podcast for women. I'll link both of those below. And I've also been listening to the Pure Nurture Birth podcast. That podcast has a lot of like positive birth stories and birth education in there. It just makes you feel really empowered for a natural birth and even a home birth. The eighth thing that I've been doing is eating healthy. During my first trimester, I wasn't really able to do this because I was limited to like eight or nine foods and they were mainly carb sources. I tried to be as healthy as I could, but the healthiest thing I was able to do during my first trimester was smoothies and collagen peptides. But now that I'm in my second trimester, I'm able to eat a lot healthier. So I'm incorporating fruits, vegetables, healthy proteins, healthy fats, and healthy carbs. Diet and exercise is something that you definitely don't want to overlook, especially if you're doing a natural birth and even a home birth. My midwife actually let me borrow a book called Real Food for Pregnancy by Lily Nichols. This book right here. It's an awesome book. It has information on food that you should avoid during pregnancy and foods that you should eat during pregnancy and why. And it's all scientific based evidence. She has recipes and meal plans in here. There, it's just an awesome book. I highly recommend it. And the last thing that I'm doing to prepare for a natural birth is I'm getting my birth plan ready, which I just finally finished that yesterday. So I had my birth plan and my hospital bag list ready. For my birth plan, I had my ideal birth plan and I also have a plan B kind of birth plan attached to it. We all have our desirable birth in mind, but you know, not everything always goes as planned and you can't control everything. So it's just nice to have like a backup plan just in case, you know, you had to go to the hospital or you had to get a C-section or something like that. So I have my ideal birth plan and then a little section down below with specific requests on if something like that were to happen. And the hospital birth bag is something I have just to be prepared just in case, because you never know. If you're interested to see my birth plan or what's in my hospital bag, then send me a message or leave a comment below and I can definitely share that with you. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can see my next pregnancy video.